Now, for exercise 10, we have to graph the relations. Same goes for exercise 12. So we'll be working on them kind of in parallel. So the first one, exercise 10, it gives us the relation x comma minus 3 bar 0 smaller or equal than x smaller than 5. So the first thing to do when we have to graph something, it is create a plane, an x, y axis. X is usually the left to right and Y the up and down axis. Now we start to graph this by putting any information we have down. So here the points of interest are the following. We have the zero and the five that are bounding X. So I will put those down marked in the X axis. So we have the zero and the five for the X axis. And even though Y is not explicitly mentioned, we see that the second coordinate of the point given X comma minus three, we have that the second coordinate is fixed. That implies that Y will always be equal with minus three. So let's put it down here. Immediately, since Y is forced to always be equal with minus three, we are restricting our graph to the line that passes on minus three parallel to the X axis, to the line that is of height minus three. Now, the second part after the vertical line gives us the restrictions for X. We are forced here to be between X is equal than zero and smaller than five. That includes zero, but not five because we do not have smaller n equal than five. Now, on a graph, when we want to notate a point that it is included and it is an end point of our interval, we mark it with a solid circle. So I'm going to put the zero comma minus three with a solid circle and the five comma minus three with an empty circle because this is not included. X cannot reach the value five. It is always smaller than. Now, we have no restriction for between 0 and 5, so we connect them with a solid line to indicate that those points are all included. And that is for the graph of the relation x, comma minus 3, where x is restricted between 0, and we include 0, and 5, but we do not include 5. Now, on problem 12, we have to graph the relationship x comma y, where now we have that y is smaller or equal than five. Notice here that we have no restriction for x, nor the coordinate of x is fixed as we had in the previous case. That implies that X will take any value possible. In those graphs where we have one of the two variables that can take any value possible with no restrictions, we end up with a graph that is a two-dimensional one. Previously, that we had restriction for both X and Y, we just have a line, which is a one-dimension graph. Now here that we'll have a two-dimension graph, it is something that has an area, a positive area something that will look like a part of the plane, not just a slice of the plane. Now, as previously, I'll start marking down the points of interest. Here we have that Y is bounded by five. Y is smaller or equal than five. So at hit five, I will draw out a dotted line as before. Now, because Y it is allowed to include five, it is smaller or equal, not like x was before strictly smaller, I will write down that line fully and not just a dotted one. And I have no restrictions for x, so this line extends from minus infinity to plus infinity as far as the left-right axis go. Now, I only include points that have coordinate of y smaller or equal than five. That is any point below my line. So the graph here involves any part that is below that line. 
that is what I mentioned earlier, that we expect that it be it is a big part of the plane. It is something that has two dimensions. It has an up and down and a left and right compared to the line earlier that can only move left and right and it has no way to go up and down. Let's proceed with the next two homework, 14 and 16. We're given relations again, and we are asked to check if they represent a function. For a relation, after we graph it in order to represent a function, it has to pass the vertical line test. That is, that any vertical line drawing the x, x y axis should only pass through one point at most from the point of the relation. So let's start with the first set, which, is, uh, which are the points 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 7, and 4, 7, and graph them in the x, y axis. So we have the x coordinate 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the y coordinates 3 and 7. Now the points, as mentioned, it is the point 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 7, and 4, 7. We see here that any vertical line we can possibly draw can only pass from one point, hence this relation does represent a function. It passes the vertical line test. For 14, we are given the points 1, 6, 2, 4, 1, 4, 2, 10. So we have the coordinate for x1 and 2, while for the y we have 4, 6, and 10. Now the point is 1, 6, 2, 4, 1, 4, and 2, 10. So here we see there are two possible vertical lines that pass from more than one point. The vertical line at x is equal with 1 does pass from two points, and so does the vertical line at x is equal with 2. So in both cases, the relation fails the vertical line test, and hence this does not represent a, a function. <laughs> 